going to be walking around a lot of uh, area cemeteries and looking at a very unusual uh, type of grave. It's called a tent grave or the comb grave. This is Mount Gilead in White County. These types of uh, gravestones and graves are found throughout the Highland Rim, Upper Cumberland area, uh, stretching all the way from southern Kentucky down. Uh, this is White County. You can find them in White County. Uh, you can find them Putnam, where I live, uh, Overton, Fentress. We're going to stop at several cemeteries. It's uh, a style of burial that was prevalent in the early 1800s up into the early 1900s. Then it sort of uh, disappeared. Now we'll talk about some reasons for that. Uh, great thing about this cemetery in uh, White County is just the prevalence of so many of them. This place is uh, covered in them. There's probably been over 3,000 tent graves that have been documented. Uh, Again, we'll talk about why uh, the reason they were called, and probably the proper name is a comb grave, is that the comb is sort of an archaic uh, term for the ridge of a roof. So you can see the way the grave was formed. You had your triangular end pieces. Then the right piece was laid down, and then the left piece and the end pieces. So you can pretty much see by all the graves that's the they were made basically triangular end pieces. The right slab was put down, and then the left slab. Some are in better shape than others, but uh, this is made from sandstone uh, called the Hartzell Formation. Uh, this whole area is covered in sandstone, so if you found a lamination process of the stone where you could basically have quarries in various geographic regions, uh, then these graves were were uh, very prevalent. It'd take about from the size of these stones, probably at least four people to handle these. So back in the day, they they're more of a regional type of a, of a uh, process. So you couldn't haul them very far in horse buggy that type of thing. So no doubt there was a quarry. In White County, there's one located in near Monterey and Calf Killer. There was one in the All Red area. We'll stop that later on. So, uh, just a fascinating custom of the day that lasted for about a hundred years and then stopped. So, we're going to uh, move on to another cemetery in White County, then move to Putnam. Overton and then Fentress. We'll talk more about why this particular style of uh, grave was used and probably why it stopped. Next stop is France Cemetery near the Calf Killer uh, Highway 84. So this is our second stop in White County, and quite a few of the comb or tent graves in this location. Uh, again, what you'll see is 
early 1800s back to uh, early 1900s. Now these are a bit more elaborate. They've got uh, elaborate headstones. Uh, some have the small triangular end, but these have got the larger, uh, uh, more ornate headstones. You'll see lots and lots of variations of the, uh, of the tent grave. Some are constructed, again, of the Hartzell sandstone. You'll see a few in granite, uh, some in basically metal on a wood frame. Uh, I can look at this small one here and basically know that's a child by the length of it. You can see how much smaller it is. But this is a uh, France Cemetery on Highway 84. Uh, to be honest with you, it's not really famous for the tent or comb graves as it is for a gentleman named Frank, uh, Champ Ferguson. He was a local uh, famous guerrilla warfighter in the Civil War that was hanged by the Union and uh, buried here. But uh, this is stop for a lot of folks, motorcycle riders, people traveling just to stop and uh, and see Champ's grave, but uh, we're here because of the tent grave. Uh, and again, one other thought, I believe the correct term was probably the comb grave, but if you look at the grave themselves, what do they resemble? A small one-person tent, so I'm sure over time it became known as the tent rather than the comb grave. So we're going to move on to a couple more in uh, Putnam County. Again, France Cemetery, Highway 84, and White County. This is the Henry Cemetery. This is our first stop in Putnam County. Uh, again, if you've got any local cemetery that's been around a while, you'll find this particular grave style. Uh, up 1868 to 1880, a very young person, but uh, <coughs> more in the far back. So why did why was this style of burial so prevalent? There's several theories. One is that because of the roof, it diverted rain from the grave, preserving uh, the body. One thought is that old cemeteries had farm animals that grazed and uh, kept them clean because there weren't uh, power mowers and things of that nature. So as the tombstone deteriorated, the ground settled down and the farm animals could... Uh, would hurt themselves or hurt their legs stepping into the soft dirt. Theory number two 
additional theory is that uh, it kept animals from getting into the grave because of the rocky soil. The bodies weren't buried as deeply and uh, it helped protect the bodies. So the main theory is of the theory of protection. It's a very old one here. So this is our third stop. We'll stop another time in Putnam, then move into Overton and a few unfentress. But you'll see uh, uh, some variations, but we'll talk a little bit more as to one possible other scenario and why they stopped. Uh, you go from a very prevalent method of burying people from 18 hundreds to early 1900s and then it just stopped and there's a different uh, method so we'll talk a little bit about that here at Fallen Springs uh, Cemetery and this is a fantastic cemetery it shows you basically all types of uh, burial sites uh, from just unmarked rocks in the ground to the tent to now you see a variety of the tent which is called the box and uh, several of these here and also a variation of the tent that has the bolt running through the end pieces to hold everything together problem with that is once the uh, parts slide off the bolt, you can see them start to collapse. Then another fascinating burial style probably came from the Scotch-Irish uh, folks were the Cairn type uh, burial sites with stacked stone. Uh, several of those here just again a fascinating cemetery that represents all the various uh, burial styles throughout the ages and it brings up a good question what will a cemetery look like a hundred years from now uh, who knows lots and lots of the old tent graves uh, so what happened why did we change from this type to the other well I think you can see the answers down here along came the granite polished tombstones with the uh, names etched into the stone and it represented new while the old sandstone uh, grave sites represented the old norm so what was normal a hundred years ago became replaced by the new modern gravestones that we're familiar with so it was one of those things uh, it was a socially accepted norm and that was the materials they had but uh, along came the granite stones and then that became what people wanted it became socially acceptable on the norm growing up uh, I saw these all my life but really didn't think much about them just to me represented really old cemeteries and leads to a couple of lessons in life and that's to stay connected to your past uh, Hold on to the stories that your parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles told you. Uh, your past helps determine what you are today. So 
remember your past hold on to the past preserve the past a lot of these old stones uh, are falling down and families aren't around anymore but uh, they're worth preserving you can see again young children uh, uh, just a another life lesson is to never quit learning hope you learned something in this video I've just found it a fascinating subject addressing a lot of things that I just took for granted growing up uh, didn't really understand why people did what they did with these types of graves. We talked earlier about the way that it protected the grave. Uh, was an emotional support for the family knowing they protected the uh, their loved ones' graves. But uh, things changed and along came uh, the more modern types of stones and it became a part of our history hope you've enjoyed it uh, alrighty then I'll uh, talk to you later